When I was a kid, I was a massive Richmond fan. My dad played in the 67 Premiership team. Dad had great scrapbooks that my grandmother had kept for him. I looked at them religiously and I knew the history of the club. I knew all the past players. I knew what a powerful club Richmond was in the 60s and 70s. I grew up in Tasmania, so I didn't get to see them play a lot, but I remember lying around in the lounge room, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, trying to tune in the AM radio band to try and pick up the footy here in Melbourne. Ride the emotion from the lounge room in Devonport. Really invested in, in what Richmond was doing. My first footy club was the East Devonport Football Club. My dad had played there in the 70s. In Tassie, at a lot of those local grounds, you can drive the car in, you know, and park around the boundary line and toot the horn when someone kicks a goal. Dad would always get in there early, and we'd generally have the VFL back then on the radio checking the scores of the Tigers games. You sort of feel like you grow up at the club. Part of our weekend was going to the footy. I remember the first Richmond game I went to. My nan lived in Sheltner. I remember getting on the train and coming into the MCG with her and my, and my pop and walking into the ground. I guess you felt like a tribe walking in to watch your team. And I just remember the, the colours, you know, everyone had the colours on and I hadn't really experienced that before in Tassie. You know, you might get 150 people at the footy. There was 150 people in our carriage coming from Cheltenham with Richmond jumpers on. I never really thought of playing for anyone else because I could go to Richmond under the father and son rule. I had that luxury. Dad and me flew over here on the Sunday watched Richmond play Adelaide. Richmond got pumped by about 15 goals. We walked over to Punt Road after the game, sat in Cameron Schwab's office. He offered me a four-year contract. It was pretty ordinary uh, coin. And I looked at it and Dad said to Schwabby, look, we'll fly home tonight and we'll have a look at it and we'll let you know. And I said, no way, Dad, we're signing this now. Just a surreal feeling, flying back on the, the little Fokker back to Devonport that night. Oh, Richardson! I guess I was a, a Richmond supporter playing for Richmond and to be honest, not many guys get to do that. I've worked plenty of Richmond games where you're tied up in knots inside. I don't think I'm biased, but if you have a look at Twitter after the game, people from whichever team lost that game say that you're biased. The Tigers are in the grand final! Can you believe it? I really enjoyed being a part of the day. I was lucky to you know, be out there on the ground before the game with Mark Bickley walking the cup out. At that point, I felt sort of half relaxed. But as soon as the game started, yeah, it was it was hard work. I was riding every bump, and you don't even know you're doing that. Remarkable scenes, aren't they? I could feel it coming, and yeah, it was it was just an unbelievable feeling. Just the overflow of emotion, and look at Matthew. I thought about my old man. You know, Dad's not with us anymore, and I just thought he would have loved to have seen this. He was desperate to see another Richmond Premiership. I mean, I felt like a fan out on the ground that day after the game, even though I was working. There was no jealousy at all, and I couldn't be happier as a Richmond supporter winning a Premiership. I was looking at it more as a supporter, not as a former player who didn't have success. Now, with, with Zoe, she doesn't have a choice. She's not going to get to choose who she breaks for. In fact, she's already a Richmond member and support her at 11 months of, of age. She'll learn pretty quickly that when Richmond wins, she's probably going to get anything she wants because I'll be as happy as Larry. I think I used to hit that up for the odd uh, $2 coin here and there after a Richmond win.